Hi guys, in this video I will talk about the delegate pattern. This is not only a powerful but also commonly used pattern in Swift. For example, when using table views or text fields, you will often see this pattern in action. So let's set the ball rolling by taking an example to understand the concept. Let's say you are in the process of building your dream house. You broadly know what you want. Buy a plot of land, register the plot of land, build the house, build the garden, build the swimming pool, and register the house. Now while you know what you want, you do not know how it will be done. No worries, housing agents are there to help you. Each agent provides a blueprint on how they will implement each of your requirements. You then select the most reasonable agent and delegate the job to them. Now let's not read too much into this example, but just be aware of a few points. We have one object who provides a protocol or blueprint of what it wants, but it does not know how. This object is the delegating object. Then we have another object who is capable of satisfying one or more of these protocol tasks. This object is the delegate. Alright, with this example behind us, let's head to Xcode and look at delegation with another example. Just one more thing guys, if you like this video, don't forget to check out our cool Swift video courses. Apart from videos, you will have access to quizzes, reference material, discussion forums and yes, certification. So if this sounds interesting at any point during this video, click here. Okay, so we'll start by creating a new Xcode project, a single view application. Let's call it Delegate. The language will be Swift, the device, the iPhone. Let's create this project. And now let's go to the main storyboard section and highlight our view controller out here. And we'll disable size classes or, or universal storyboard and keeping size classes just for the iPhone. So as you can see, the view controller is more realistic. And now we'll drag and drop a label and a text field on our canvas and stack them up like this. And now I'm going to quickly add some constraints. And after doing that, this is what our canvas is going to look like. And now let's go ahead and change this label. And I'm going to call it multiple three. So what does that mean? We'll come to know in a, min in a minute. Right, so now let me hide this section out here and open the assistant editor where we can write some code and also hide the utility section and also the navigation section. So let's stress things out a bit. All right, so now we're going to use, we're going to start by removing code we don't need. So we'll remove this function out here and this comment. Right, so here's the key question. What are we trying to do out here? So we are trying to get every, every third character in this text field to become the image of a rocket. So irrespective of what the user enters, every third character automatically gets converted to the image of a rocket. So the first thing we need to do is get the Unicode value of the rocket image. So that's what it is. And now since we're going to uh, manipulate this text field, we need to get an outlet to the text field. So let's do that. Great. And now let's arrange things a bit. Okay. Now since we know what logic we want in the text field, we can write that in this view controller. However, where do we write that? And the only object that can tell us that is the text field. So let's go ahead and uh, investigate this text field class and see if we can find where to write this code. So here we have the text field class and it's, uh, there are a lot of public variables out here. And But what we are interested in is this variable out here, the text field delegate. So let's go ahead and click on this. So as you can see, what we have here is a blueprint or an interface or a protocol of the various functions we could write. And as you can see, all of them are optional. So let's select our uh, function. 
So the function that we need is this one here. So as you can see, it doesn't have a body and that makes sense because it is us who need to implement this function. So let's just yank it out and go back to our view controller and paste this function here. And as you can see, we get a not so subtle error message, which means we need to do a few things. But let's first just add these opening and closing uh, braces out here. And then let's go to this class out here and adopt the text field delegate. So by doing so, it means we are eligible to implement its methods. But before going ahead, we need to add another thing. And this is something that beginners often forget. We've got to make it a bit more obvious, saying that we are the delegate of this particular text field, because you could have many text fields. So you've got to be more specific about which delegate, about which text field you are being the delegate. So let's do that there. And now let's go ahead and remove these two keywords out here. And for the moment, let's just uh, complete this function by just saying return true. I will also yank this comment and put it inside the function and also in uh, add a bit of indentation out here. Great. So let's quickly look at this function. So what this function is doing is, okay, when is this function triggered? This function is triggered each time there's a change in the text field. In other words, something is, some text is added or removed. So this text field out here represents what's already in the text field and the replacement uh, string is represents the string that is being added or removed. And uh, we want to say that if the number of characters in the text field plus the number of characters being added or removed is a multiple of three, then we want to uh, replace that third character. Let's just fix things out here quickly. Yeah, okay. And then we want to replace this, uh, this third character with the rocket. Okay, and now finally we return false. So why do we return false? Because we do not want the replacement string to be added because we have just replaced it with the rocket. Okay, so we're getting an error out here. Let's quickly see what it is. Right, we're going to unwrap this. Okay, so now let's run things. And let's add our characters. So let's not use, let's use numeric values. So three. Okay, that's a rocket then, sixth character, great. What about the ninth character? Fine, so that seems to be working. What about in case of removing characters? So that definitely <laughs> is not working out here. So we need to tweak our code a bit. So let's go back, stop the simulator. And we'll ensure that this, these two lines only occur when we are adding uh, characters to the text field. So basically, if the replacement string count is greater than zero. Let's enclose this in curly braces, otherwise we just uh, re return true. So let's try this out again. Again, we'll using numeric values. Third character, sixth character, ninth character. Fine, that was working before. What about removing characters? Okay, that works fine. Great. All right, guys, we're going to raise the bar a bit out here. So I'm going to add another label and text field to this canvas. And in this case, we will have every fifth character being replaced by the image of a bus. So let's go ahead and do this. So let's quickly add uh, the new label and text field to the canvas. I'm just going to get the utility section out here. And let's quickly add these two elements. There we go. Right. So that done, let's open up the navigation window and I'm going to add a new file. So basically I'm going to create the delegate of the second text field in a new class rather than use the view controller. So let's create this new Swift file and I'm going to call it delegate bus text and we'll create a class delegate bus text and before that we need to import the UI kit and of course we will adopt this delegate we're getting an error out here okay we need to also add this in this object out here 
So all we do is go to this uh, view controller and yank this code and we'll copy it there and we'll just tweak it a bit. So the first thing of course that we need is to get the Unicode character of the bus. So let's do that quickly. I guess I'll just copy my rocket uh, out here, change it to my bus and also change this value out here. And then we'll just change things accordingly and change this to my bus out here. So what I'm not liking out here is the number of constant values that are scattered around our project. So maybe it's a good idea to pick up these constant values and put them in a file of their own, basically centralize them so that we can change one area if needed. So for that I'm going to create a new file and this will also be a Swift file and let's call it my constants. Okay, and I'm going to create a structure basically rather than a class in this case. And this structure is going to have two substructures. One we'll call my emojis and one we'll call my characters. And within this, we'll, it'll have two static values for the rocket and the bus. And the emojis will have the bus characters, oh, sorry, Unicode. And the other one will have a numeric value. So basically, it'll be three for rocket. And we want every fifth character to be a bus. So the other one will be five. So as you can see, this is much better, neater. Everything is localized. So all I need to do is just remove stuff which we don't need. So let's remove this variable out here and go back where here. We'll change that using my constants and using the static variable out here. So this will be my characters. And this will be my uh, rocket, right? Yeah. And similarly, the other one. We'll change this copy this out here, go back here, and this will be my emojis. Okay, so I think this is much neater. And let's do the same thing in the other Swift files. Again, remove this variable out here and replace. So this will be my emojis. And this will, of course, be my bus but, and my emojis. And the other numeric value there. Let's change that to all right. So now let's just uh, take a step back and see what all we have done. So we've created this file my constants, which localizes all the constants. We have created a new delegate file uh, for and also the view controller, which we have seen before. So now let's open our assistant editor, but before that, let's just open this main storyboard. And now we'll create an outlet to the second text field. So let's drag and drop. I'll call it my bus text field. Okay, now this should be interesting. So for the rocket de uh, text field, the delegate was self or the view controller class. But for the text, uh, the bus text field, we're going to have another ob uh, object. So first we need to create that object, which we've just done. And now we go out here, let's yank it and put it on top so that it's more visible. And for the bus text field, okay, we need to remove this extra curly break, bracket, let's come here. And for the bus text field, the delegate will be the object, the bus delegate object. Now this is important. Okay, so now we've got two different functions being called across two different files. So now let's test things. Okay, so we've got our two text fields out here. Let's try the first one. And this was working before, and it should now too, unless we've broken something. Right, that's fine. And the second one. One, two, three. The fifth element should be a bus. Oh, that's a lovely bus, school bus. And there we go. So guys, this brings us to the end of the lesson. I hope you found it useful. Please. As before, send me your comments and thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for watching this video guys, but please do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like and comment on this video and share it with people who might find it useful.